Welcome to Gossip About Gossip, powered by Hedera Hashgraph. In each episode, we'll cut through the hype of blockchain promises and explore real-world examples of organizations creating the next generation of decentralized applications, which will bring trust back to the internet for us all. Hello, future. My name is Zenobia Godschalk, and I am the SVP of Communications at Swirl Labs, supporting Hedera. Welcome. Um, we are here with the latest episode of Gossip About Gossip, and today I am joined by Owen Flynn from Timeless. Hi, Owen. How are you? And good. And yourself? Good. Thank you. Thank you for coming on with us today. I'm happy to be on. Uh, thanks for the invite. Absolutely. So, you know, Timeless is a newer story for the Hedera community. Can you just share with us a little bit about your mission and vision and how you came to the company? Yeah, of course. So our mission here is to sort of accelerate companies' transition towards the decarbonized future. So, you know, the projects we have in the Netherlands and over here in Australia, they're all aimed at helping companies become carbon neutral. And, you know, we've been doing a pretty good job of that so far. So, so it was about this time last year, actually, I was um, contacted by a recruiter saying, hey, do you want to come work for a company focusing on sustainability using blockchain? And, you know, one of my first questions was, well, why, why would you use blockchain for that? You know, is it energy intensive? It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> and I guess right. that's sort of where it segues <laughs> into, you know, the whole uh, why we went with Hedera story, you know, down the line. Um, so recently, when I first joined the company, um, we're sort of in the, the process of, sort of transitioning away from our own blockchain. So originally, Timeless was set up to develop its own blockchain solution. So the Timeless blockchain solution platform, or Tablespoon for short. And that was an Etherman setup. So it was, you know, setting up nodes, having customers in the set up their own nodes and all that type of stuff. And, you know, we began the process really when Dan Voice, our CTO, came on in July last year, it was. And we began the process of looking for that sort of new blockchain provider to underpin all our solutions. And uh, we ended up coming across the Hedera, of course. And I'm sure you took a look at a lot of different solutions, you know, without naming any names. Can you just share what compelled you to go with Hedera? So there was a few things sort of, I suppose, from the, the development side and also the business side, really, that made us really settle with Hedera. Um, from the development side, just a great open source community out there. You know, we're already entrenched in the Hedera community right now. We're working with some great companies like Envision and Miko. You know, they're doing great work in the community. Um, so from a development standpoint, it was it was a no-brainer, really. You know, the, the, the speed of the transactions processing country Hedera is, you know, it's, it's unmatched, really. And then from a business side, I suppose, the biggest thing, and, and I guess it's really what did make us settle on Hedera. Well, sorry, there's two things. First of all, is definitely like the fees being pegged to the US dollar. You know, being able to have stable fees for us is huge. I, I like personally, I don't understand how any other companies are working with any other blockchain for business applications. It doesn't make sense. You know, we, we, we've all seen the volatility in cryptocurrencies. You know, one day your token can be worth a hundred dollars, the next day it can be worth 200. So how can you go out to a client and price a solution that's meant to last for five years when you have no idea what the fees are going to be in five years? So having that stability with Hedera is huge. And, then obviously the, the second big thing for us it was you know the the whole greenness of Hedera you know being a, a carbon neutral network for us in the ESG sustainability space it's a, it's a no brainer you know as I was talking about before when I first came on board you know the, the whole thing around cryptocurrencies and blockchain was the huge energy consumption and we're still seeing that on blockchain such as you know Bitcoin obviously is one the current uh, Ethereum setup as well, you know, there's just huge energy consumers, but, you know, we're looking at Hedera and correct me if I'm wrong, it's 0 0.00017 kilowatts per transaction, some minute number. And it's like, how can you go with anything else in this space? Right. So, yeah, you're having a conversation with a client and they're trying to present, you know, this to their CFO. I can see how, you know, being able to say here is your estimated cost, um, you know, and having a much more um, tight Band of what that will be versus here's your estimated cost, cost and fingers crossed the price of the cryptocurrency does not fluctuate wildly. Uh, <laughs> exactly. You know, we, we signed a, a contract with somebody and we're like, look, this week is going to cost you know a hundred dollars to run the solution. Next week it might be one hundred and fifty. The week after that it might be ninety. You're not going <laughs> to sell anything. So you can offer your customer a fixed price, and then you have to deal with hedging. You have to deal with all those complexities. 
or you can just come to Hedera and it's all sorted for you. It's a no-brainer for us. Yeah, yeah. I don't know a single CFO who would not scratch their head at that kind of volatility and pricing. Not at all. Not at all. And so, how was the process of moving from you know your own blockchain to Hedera? Oh, uh, it, it was simple. Like we, okay. I say it was simple. I'm not in the development team. <laughs> I'm sure if a CTO sees this, he, he might give me a different answer. But like from what I understand, it was you know it was such an easy process for the guys. Like, so we're working with the developer advocates um, as well. Um, and they just made it a breeze. We had any questions, we were able to hit them up on Slack, on Discord, and we got our questions answered. Anything we need figured out, and we're still in regular contact with them for you know getting solutions ready. Like the ecosystem that Hedera has is, is really is fantastic. So you know, tell us a little bit about what your customers are doing with the platform today, and you know, if you can share a little bit about how the Hedera piece um, plays a role there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So one of our projects we have currently running is with the Queensland government. So they're a major state government over here in Australia for anybody who is nowhere. And so we've come into one of their buildings in the Gold Coast Health and Knowledge Precinct, which is our timelines as headquarters. And we're doing full energy monitoring, solar forecasting and uh, ESG reporting solution for them. So we're coming in doing the whole carbon emissions reporting. At the end of the day, the state government, they're looking to host the first carbon neutral Olympics in 2032. And so they need solutions then that can actually be or prove how carbon neutral these Olympics are. So we're coming in, we're doing a demonstration project for them uh, down here on the Gold Coast. And so we're, we have the full suite. So we're doing granular energy monitoring. So every five minutes we're reporting on our energy usage. All that data is then being logged to the blockchain and verified using the full trust chain that we have in there as well. And so we're providing them the energy footprint so they can monitor all the different nine tenancies, 10, 10 tenancies that they have on site all individually, it's granularity they've never had before. And then we're also able to plug into some solar forecasting APIs. So we've done some geospatial mapping into roof space. We have solar panels information in there. So they don't have any solar producing assets. What we've done is we've said, hey, look, if you have these solar producing assets based on your energy uses, which we're currently capturing, here's what your carbon footprint would look like. So we're able to come to them and say, look, based on what you're going to have installed, we can say that this building will very likely be carbon neutral or this building needs more solar, this building needs less solar, depending on what they want to do. And, you know, it, it really gives them insights that they've never had before. Like they, they want to have buildings across Queensland carbon neutral. So it's like, hey, do you install extra solar on this building so that it offsets, you know, building B? Or, hey, do we just go and buy a solar farm so it offsets building A, B, and C? It's all data and granularity insights that they've really never, ever had before. So we're providing that to them. And of course, on the back end of that, we're using the Hedera consensus service to validate all those energy readings and then also the token service to mint those carbon offset and carbon emission tokens. So if they want, then they can use the Hedera network to go off and purchase carbon offsets if they're not actually carbon neutral or sell their excess carbon offsets if they are carbon neutral and they want to gain some extra revenue from that. So, you know, being able to plug into that network, you know, we're starting to see you know, places like Dovu come online where they can go and buy their tokens. You know, it really makes our lives a whole lot more simple. I was just going to ask if you're working with other projects like Dovu on that piece of it, because it does feel like a lot of these sustainability parts of the ecosystem have been attracted to Hedera and are starting to complement one another. Yeah, definitely. The ecosystem is really starting to build out. Like even since we've come into the ecosystem, we're starting to see more companies. As I said, companies like Miko, who are uh, actually located down in Melbourne as well, they might actually be moving into the same office building as us down there. You know, just being able to work with them, just send them a message on Slack saying, hey, do you guys have this already so we don't have to build it? And they're saying to us, hey, do you have this? And it's, it's really is that sharing of ideas in the community that it, you know, it really accelerates our go to market and, you know, it's going to be great for the whole ecosystem. And, you know, it does feel like there is a lot happening in Australia as sort of a leader in this space. Um, you know, we certainly are seeing the same kinds of things in terms of the desire for reporting and accountability, um, especially for public companies in the um, in the states. But why do you think Australia has been, um, you know, such a pioneer in this space or there's so much innovation there? I I think it's because of the sort of renewable energy economy we have over here. Like Australia is or has the largest amount of solar PVs in the world or has the highest generation capacity of rooftop solar, residential rooftop solar. So I think it's a lot of these companies now who have these green assets in place now actually want to see the returns on them. So whether that's being able to go out to market and say, hey, we're carbon neutral or, you know, hey, we want to sell our carbon offsets. You know, companies want to really start seeing the value in the 
the, the generation assets that they have or the PPAs that they've entered into to go out to their clients to say, hey, look, we're carbon neutral. And, you know, as you say, the U.S. is sort of really leading the way in terms of regulation. So it's only a matter of time now that we see the rest of the world start to implement things like this. And I think a lot of Australian companies recognize this and they're going, hey, look, I think it's we should really do something about this now. So we're not doing something about it, you know, two years from now, like. What companies don't realize, you know, we're starting to see it now, but a lot of companies still don't realize 20 or 30 is eight years away. And if you have, you know, a huge company, a multi-billion dollar company, you know, becoming carbon neutral isn't an overnight thing, right? They need to have plans in place for how to get there. And to, to, you know, sort of baseline their plans, they need to know what their current carbon emissions are. So they need solutions like what we're offering with Timeless to be able to go, okay, look, we're currently producing, you know, a million tons of CO2 a year. Now let's put a roadmap in place to how to reduce that over the next eight years because, you know, it, you cannot leave this to 2029 or else <laughs> you're not going to hit your 2030 targets. Right, right. So what does a typical rollout look like for you with a client? I would imagine, you know, some of it is certainly bespoke, but are there, you know, kind of a, t- a typical set of steps that you go through with your clients? Yeah. So look, we have the core timeless platform. So that, you know, the majority of our components are already built in. And then it's just sort of that, that edge customization for what we're really implementing for clients. So like in an ideal work, you know, scenario, we'd go in, do a workshop with them, fully understand what they're looking for, the parameters they're looking to gather, the metrics they're looking to have in there, the reports they're looking to produce. And then we go from there and we'll, we'll go, okay, look, this is the workshop we've had. Now this is what we're going to go and build and implement, you know, constant kind feedback along the way, incorporate all of that in there. You know, it, we try to be, as you know, light touch as possible. At the end of the day, we don't want to be interrupting, you know, regular business activities. You know, customers, clients that want that, they just want someone to come in, do all the work, get it all there, and they have it all set up. So we just like to come in, do that workshop, get everything we need, and then come in, have that really light touch approach to everything, and you know, get ourselves embedded within the system. And as you and the team have, you know, now been working with Hadera for a little while and been rolling out the solutions, anything, any lessons learned or other things that you would share with developers and companies as they are evaluating the various blockchain and DLT solutions? Yeah, look, I, I would say take a look into the ecosystem, right? Because there are some other great blockchains out there. There, there really are. Like, you know, Hedera isn't the only one. Hedera is a great blockchain. Let's make that clear so we don't get booted out of here. But, okay. um, you, know, you know, go have a look at the community that's there. Like, there's no other ESG community like there is on the Hedera network. There's no other stable fees like there are on the Hedera network. There's no other green blockchain like there is with Hedera. You know, you have to look at this from a business perspective, right? You're not just looking at, you know, oh, look, this is a popular blockchain. That's great, right? If you don't have fixed fees, how are you going to price your solution, right? If you don't have an ecosystem there that you can rely on, then who are you going to go to when you run into a roadblock or there isn't features that have already been developed by the community? You know, just t- really go and, go and talk to one of the developer advocates for Hedera, you know, have, have a real sit down, have a chat with them and understand what's out there. Yep. They are certainly lovely and hardworking people. Uh, they um, are. <laughs> I feel like around the clock. Um, what is what is next for Timeless as we look, you know, six to twelve months down the road? What are you guys hoping to achieve, or, or you know, if we can take a sneak peek at anything you're willing to share? That is a great question. I would love to tell you absolutely everything, but being a publicly listed company over here, we have to be very careful about what we say. Look. What we really want to do is we want to start bringing on more customers onto the Timeless platform. Obviously, you know, re- really building out and proving out the technology and showing what we're capable of, you know, over here and also over, you know, we have projects in Europe as well. It's a truth consortium over there. We're making great progress with that. We want to really see, you know, some commercial outcomes out of that or, you know, some more pilots and test cases come out of that project over there. You know, we're, we're already seeing, you know, some great use cases being developed by the team. So we want to really start building those out and, you know, proving out the technology. Well, Owen, I hope you will come back and keep sharing with us all of your updates. Um, anything else you'd like to share with the community before we sign off? I've uh, covered off everything today, haven't we? I think you have. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. We appreciate you being part of the community and everything that you do. And we look forward to hearing more about your progress. Brilliant. Well, thank you for that and definitely look forward to coming back. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.